The next hour and a half or two hours of presentation will be on the post tension slab on ground design methodology uh, used by the PTI or, or uh, described in the PTI manual. Um, this is almost a, uh, solely for residential foundations. This has nothing to do with, um, let's say, actual building structures that use columns. Um, in a structural sense. So if you're looking for something for structural mat slabs for a office building in the hotel, uh, hotel, there is a webinar for mat designs that I did about a month or two ago that you'd probably be more interested in. But this is almost exclusively for load bearing, wood framed, metal stud bearing type structures using the PTI methodology. So moving forward, um, as Maria mentioned, I am the co-author of a book, post tension Concrete Principles and Practice. This book is set up in two segments. One, the first half is the introductory undergraduate course for post tension Concrete. It's currently used at UCLA, uh, Cal Poly Slo, uh, Cal State LA, the University of Portland. Um, the second half of the book is basically what to do, how to use PT in the job area and in industry. So pretty much we have a lot of design examples for parking garages, podiums, hotels. There's a uh, section on diaphragm design, observation, and in particular, there's a chapter about slabs on ground, which is basically where this webinar comes from. So if you are interested in further aspects of post-tension concrete, or in particular, the slab on ground aspect, uh, please look at the book. You can purchase it through SK Goshen Associates. They have a hard copy and a PDF ebook copy as well. Now, going forward with the actual webinar, the main point or the main design aid for the PTI slab on ground comes from the Post Tensioning Institute, standing for PTI. The design of the post tension slabs on ground, uh, every few years they produce a new document. There is a, um, you know, hardworking individuals on the geotechnical side and the structural side that modify and, you know, take your points or things that they find during the design phase and modify it accordingly every so often. Um, it is code approved methodology and this document can be purchased from PTI and it has pretty much all the equations that you would need to do uh, the slab on ground design methodology, which I will go through during this webinar. So again, if you're new to the PT slab on ground design, this document and others like it uh, would be a must have to make sure you're following the intent of the design methodology correctly. And it also gives you a lot of things to look for and there are some typical details and other aspects so I would recommend purchasing it. So getting started just real quickly, what is the PTI methodology? It's primarily used for single family residential homes. Uh, if this is for combating expansive or compressible soils. If you are on a stable site, this really methodology doesn't apply to you. Pretty much anything that's an EI over 20 is considered a expansive soil site. And then you have to do something you know, special or some um, unique design and the PTI method is one of them. So the vast majority of this application is for single family homes and it has been used from California through Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, pretty much anywhere that has compressible or expansive soils, it has been used and used quite a bit. Now, in my neck of the woods in California, what is happening is there's not a whole lot of home construction in terms of single family homes, but there is a substantial amount of apartments. And so your four or five levels of wood apartment buildings, these huge complexes, most times uh, are still used the PTI methodology. You can do it to about 2,500 to 3,000 pounds a linear foot of a bearing pressure um, uh, our bearing load system, but again, it's primarily built for a bearing wall framing application. If you're using an apartment complex that has primarily columns, uh, this may not exactly be the meth methodology, or you'd have to figure out a way to amortize that load out to model more of a bearing wall type structure. It's really meant for, again, it was developed in Texas, uh, which I'll get into in a little bit, but it was effectively developed for uh, single family homes uh, for expansive soils that primarily is a bearing wall system. Now, having said that, you can use it for commercial and retail buildings. Again, if your perimeter where most of the design takes place for the PTI method is a bearing wall structure, it still applies and then the interior columns are kind of in the dormant zone, so they really don't uh, do much with it. The only potential downside with the commercial and retail buildings or something that you really have to address as the engineer is putting placards or stamps in the concrete that you do have a post-tension foundation system and the slab on grade is structural. It's not 
not floating. Uh, a lot of times with retail and commercial buildings, there's a lot of tenant turnover, a lot of tenant improvement. They want to add bathrooms or change the bathroom locations. And the contractors need to know they just can't plow through the foundation because it is really the foundation, or they, they can't plow through the slab on grade because it is the foundation for the structure. And not that replacing tendons is a horrific deal, but uh, if they just start saw cutting through 50 feet of a building to put in a new trench line for uh, a sewer or drain area and they cut 60 tendons or, or sorry, 20 tendons, uh, that's going to ruin everybody's day. So any type of commercial application, we typically recommend a whole bunch of stamps and placards to clearly identify this is a PT structure.